This is the Real Digital Transformation podcast series, empowering technology and business professionals to succeed with digital transformation. Now, here's your host, best-selling author, Thomas Earle. The term digital transformation has been ambiguous throughout the years. There have been different meanings and associations assigned to it, and that has caused confusion and has also led to it not being something specific that organizations achieve, but instead a term that vaguely describes organizations transitioning to something more digital. We are at a point now where digital transformation has evolved into a formal field of practice. There is a specific set of goals. There is a specific set of criteria that is now established that help us understand what we need to do to achieve those goals. That understanding itself is critical to organizations today so that their expectations for carrying out a digital transformation can be met. Let's talk more about what constitutes a digital transformation. A digital transformation essentially is a strategic initiative. It is an initiative an organization undertakes in order to bring its business to a new level, in order to do what it has been doing better in a more optimal and effective manner, and in order to give it the opportunity to break into new markets, to establish new lines of business, and to grow in areas that it may never have thought possible. That is known as being disruptive. An organization that muscles its way into a new market is disrupting that market, which may have been stale for some time with other companies, other competitors having already well established themselves. In the digital era, there are opportunities to be disruptive. Digital transformation itself is viewed as a disruptive innovation that has led to these opportunities. That's something we need to understand and explore. And that's something this podcast series will be dedicated to. Digital transformation as a strategic initiative affects an organization on a number of levels. It introduces new technology. There is a set of new technology innovations that make digital transformation possible. It is a combination of technology automation and technology data science. Data science introduces the concept of data intelligence. Data science systems enable our automation solutions to act and behave more intelligently. They also provide valuable insights into how we are operating, into what our customers are doing, into the community or market that we operate within that allow our decision makers to better understand how to navigate the business, but that can also allow our automation solutions to better navigate themselves. That is something we'll talk about in another episode in more detail. Digital transformation impacts our technology environment, our enterprise architecture. It impacts how we currently automate our systems. Bringing these new technologies in will affect the entire landscape and ecosystem of what we currently have. But those changes are necessary in order for us to take advantage of the many benefits and enhancements that these technologies can offer us. Furthermore, we need to understand which technologies are relevant to us, and what combination of technologies we need in order to fulfill our specific goals and business requirements. So there's a technology level impact that is required when bringing a digital transformation initiative into an organization and undergoing a transformation. There is an organizational impact. Digital transformation impacts how an organization is structured. There is a core concept that underlies most digital transformation initiatives known as customer centricity. One of the most common goals of investing in digital transformation is to improve how we relate to and connect with our customers. This is especially of increased relevance due to the disruptive nature and opportunities that are brought about 
by digital transformation. In markets where organizations have been established for a long time, there may have been a tendency for those organizations to maintain bare minimum, relatively impersonal relationships with customers because those customers historically have not had elsewhere to go. Now with the opportunity for organizations to enter new markets, there is increased competition more so than ever before, and it is something that will continue to increase. Customer relations and customer loyalty have become highly valued assets. They are something that we now cultivate and pay more attention to than ever before. What this means to how an organization may need to change is how it changes internally its view of what it produces for the customer. Traditionally, organizations have been product-centric. Individual products or lines of products are developed and released independent from each other. The structure of the organization internally itself, in terms of departments and management, are also commonly structured around products. With a customer-centric objective, a lot of that within the organization is consolidated. Now, the emphasis is on customers as a primary focal point and having the organization establish a central point of contact for customers to interact with and having the customer experience be as efficient and positive as possible and to further add elements to how we automate our business and interact with the customer to ensure repeat business and long-lasting customer relations. The reason that this is so important beyond the competitive aspect is that it leads to organic growth within the organization. Customer centricity ties back to data intelligence. The underlying data systems that we are now able to bring in to support our automation provide deep insights into how we interact with customers. We can analyze how we've interacted with customers historically. We can analyze how we're interacting with customers today. And we can collect data from external third-party sources that further give us more intelligence to better analyze how we are performing and how what we are doing compares to what others are doing in our business domain. This is a very powerful part of digital transformation solutions because it truly allows us to understand and to discover new revelations of how we are operating and to look for new ways to improve. So customer centricity and utilizing data intelligence to support that are key parts of what drive a digital transformation environment and the organization itself is commonly restructured to leverage that so that it can benefit how we operate internally as well. In order to maximize how we interact with customers, we also need to change our internal operations and processes accordingly. And that goes back to consolidating from product-centric to customer-centric structures. Another key consideration is increased automation itself. This ties directly into customer centricity because by being more optimized, by being more responsive, we can better serve customers and we can improve how we are able to carry out automation. We ourselves can become more efficient and by becoming more cost effective, we can be more competitive with what we offer the customer. Automation improvements, therefore, are a common part of digital transformation environments, but they can impact an organization culturally. Organizations can adopt new automation technology that can replace human workers that have been carrying out menial tasks. There is a true opportunity to improve how we automate our solutions but that will require that human workers that have been traditionally doing some tasks manually be replaced. That is not a popular view in a lot of organizations because that can lead to resistance in adopting a digital culture. So a communication effort is required and strong leadership is required to ensure that there is a common understanding within the organization that by 
introducing new automation that opens the door for workers that have been doing menial tasks to perhaps be retrained and reallocated to performing more meaningful tasks that are more meaningful to the company, but also more rewarding to the human workers. So that aspect of digital transformation is often overlooked initially, but can lead to problems down the road when the introduction of digital transformation does not go as smoothly as anticipated. And buy-in by your staff, by your teams, by those that have brought you to where you are now is critical because moving forward, digital transformation is there to improve both internal and external operations. Another aspect that is also important when it comes to digital transformation, which we will dedicate a separate episode to in the future, is the delegation of decision-making logic. Part of the data science technology innovations that we can bring in, especially those related to AI, introduce the opportunity to delegate decision-making logic to the system itself. You can have the system decide what to do under certain circumstances and then to carry out actions based on decisions it makes. This allows the underlying automation logic, your underlying solutions to behave more intelligently and much more responsively to the outside world. This of course also comes with certain dangers whereby having your AI systems make decisions incorrectly can lead to damaging results and can also occur a number of times without you even realizing it until those results become more evident. So to avoid that from happening, risk assessments are carried out to ensure that the decision-making logic you give to AI systems is safe and that the damage that could occur from them is considered a reasonable risk and that the automation benefits by delegating the logic are then correspondingly justified. AI systems, it's worth noting, are also able to learn from the outcomes of their own decisions. So you can have AI systems carry out decisions on their own. You can have them act on those decisions autonomously. The outcome of their decisions can be fed back into them and they can learn from those outcomes over time to self-improve their decision-making logic over time to basically get better at what they do. So that's an important part of all this as well. It can be very nuanced benefits or improvements that they make, or it can be significant improvements that are chosen, or there can be cases where AI systems simply do not make correct decisions frequently enough and their responsibility to carry out those decisions is at some point revoked. All of those are aspects to introducing digital transformation environments and optimizing them and evolving them over time. So let's take a step back. Digital transformation is a strategic initiative. It impacts the organization. It impacts your technology environment, it impacts people, and it impacts your data. Digital transformation is often distinguished by being the most data-centric type of environment that we've ever come to establish within a contemporary organization enterprise. More logic, more decisions, and more responsibility revolve around our data intelligence than ever before. Another aspect to this then that needs to be carefully understood is that how is data intelligence established? What is it comprised of? And how good is the intelligence itself? We'll be exploring these topics in more detail in future episodes, but it's worth just highlighting that the intelligence of the data can be subjective. We feed our data science systems with sources of data from varying locations, internally, externally, and on an ongoing basis. Customers we interact with in digital transformation environments, the activity they generate is constantly collected. We establish customer profiles with detailed information about how the customer has acted or interacted with us historically, what they are doing today 
and where they are trending. We may even collect information from external sources, such as things the customers say about our products on social media, whatever the parameters allow in terms of data privacy and whatever is available outside in our community and whatever we can collect from our own direct interactions with customers, we look to collect in order to put together as much knowledge as we can about a given customer in order to constantly enhance our relationship with that customer over time. So in addition to individual customer profiles, we can collect statistical information, trend analysis information, and even predictive analysis data that comes from a collection of customer profiles that we collect over time. So that mass of data that we are constantly building upon allows us to see where our business is going in a much broader sense and allows us to compare how we are doing to other organizations in our overall community or in our overall business space. And that, again, is something that is commonly then provided to a human decision maker, an executive responsible for charting our path as an organization. And it can really help provide an understanding of how the business is doing, of how well the digital transformation itself is performing, and how we are compared to others in our business domain. It's an ongoing feed of data that we can constantly reference and utilize to help us make decisions for both internal and external aspects of our organization. And again, some of that data intelligence may actually be already automatically being fed into our systems that are making their own autonomous decisions based on the latest intelligence that they can use for that purpose. So overall, digital transformation provides a very real opportunity for organizations to not just become more digital, but to formalize an environment within their enterprise that is highly optimized, is highly automated, is efficient, cost-effective, and competitive, and also improve and enhance their relations with the outside world, with their clients, with their customers, with their partners, so that they hold on to their clientele, grow it, build it, improve it over time to maximize the growth of their business and to maximize the extent to which what they do can be leveraged in new markets. So digital transformation is happening today. Organizations internationally are doing exactly what I just described. In order for your organization to successfully carry out a digital transformation, that understanding needs to be clear. There cannot be just a vague notion of us going digital. That won't lead to these types of business benefits, these types of results, and that won't lead to your organization being on par with what others are doing. Clear understanding of digital transformation goals, challenges, criteria, and the practices and technologies that now comprise this as a formal part of business technology is essential to success. Thank you for listening. Follow Thomas on LinkedIn 